Jill Osborne from the Interstitial Cystitis Network with another Living with IC video. Now this is for women with IC. Did your symptoms start suddenly in your 40s, 50s, 60s, or 70s and you had no previous history of bladder issues? Or did it start after you had a hysterectomy or maybe went on Lupron to control endometriosis or maybe even when you were a teenager or in your 20s when you started birth control? Well, there's a common factor there, estrogen. So think about your bladder for a moment. It's the only organ in the human body designed to hold toxic waste. Urine contains ammonia and urea and all sorts of chemicals that we've been exposed to. So how does the bladder defend itself from this chemical stew? Well, it turns out your bladder is like your mouth. It's a hollow organ covered with a really thick coating of mucus. And the purpose of this mucus is to protect the skin. It's a barrier. So your bladder is like your uh, urethra, your vulva, vagina, and your mouth. It is a mucous membrane driven organ and that mucus plays a critical role to protect the tissues. There's something else about it you might not understand. It is estrogen dependent. So when you're young and you've got lots and lots of estrogen, guess what? You can drink a lot of soda and your bladder will be fine because it has a lot of mucus to protect it. But once you're older, or you've lost your estrogen through hysterectomy because you've lost your ovaries, guess what? Your bladder can't defend itself like it used to be able to defend itself. This is not a disease. There's no disease process happening here. It's just the loss of estrogen. We call this estrogen atrophy or the genitourinary syndrome of menopause. And my heart aches for the millions of women who were told they had incurable bladder disease when instead it's not a disease at all and it's very, very treatable. But here's the thing. So, you know, suddenly out of the blue, you start having bladder symptoms. Let's say that in your 40s and 50s, you got in the habit of going having coffee every morning with your girlfriends. And all of a sudden you start having these symptoms, frequency, urgency, pressure, pain. You call the doctor. The doctor says, hey, I think, or you say, and your doctor, maybe I got a UTI. They give you antibiotics. They don't work. You go back to the doctor. The doctor does a culture. Your urine's negative. You're going, wait, what? What? I have all the symptoms of infection. I'm peeing all night. I can't sleep more than an hour at a time. I have urgency. I have pressure. I have pain. It has to be infection, right? No, might not be. The doctor might suggest that you have overactive bladder and give you antispasmodic medications like Detrol or Ditropan. They don't work. You go back to the doctor. The doctor says, God, I hate to break it to you. I think you've got this incurable bladder disease called interstitial cystitis. Here's a diet. Here's some medication I'll see in six months. And you're gobsmacked. It's like, what? 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 You're telling me I have an incurable incurable bladder disease, I'm going to be tied to a, a bathroom for the rest of my life? That is a devastating diagnosis and it is an incorrect diagnosis. Now you do everything you're supposed to do and you simply don't get better. Why? Because we have to look beyond the symptoms at causes underlying causes. If you look at the new AUA guidelines for IC, they flat out say this is not a bladder disease. The only patients who have bladder disease are patients with infection or inflammation. For the rest of us, there are other things that can contribute to these symptoms, whether it's tight pelvic floor muscles, fibroid tumors, and for so many of us, estrogen atrophy. So what's our therapeutic priority here? Our therapeutic priority is to help the skin get strong again. And the way we do that is with estrogen. Estrogen, that when you give that skin topical estrogen, it thickens, it plumps, and it starts to produce mucus. There's no treatment that will do that other than estrogen. If we give the skin what it needs, it will get thicker and healthier and stronger and more robust. And so I encourage you to number one, you need to Google genitourinary syndrome of menopause and you need to read about it. You have to read about it. And then you're gonna have to go back to the doctor and say, hey, nobody ever told me that estrogen played such a big role in this and I would like you to look at my skin and tell me if I have some estrogen atrophy there. 
Because if you do, normally they would prescribe you a topical estrogen. And that's correct. Now, for me, it, it, it happened in a really interesting way. I was 52 and I started feeling like there was a drop of urine stuck in my urethra that would not come out. And you know, my IC self-help skills are excellent. I threw everything I knew at these symptoms, at this urethral symptoms, nothing worked. It just got worse and worse and worse and worse. So I threw myself on the mercy of my wonderful urologist at the time. His name was Dr. Mark Klein. He's long retired now. And so he did a sonogram. My bladder was empty, so I wasn't holding urine. Then he, took, he did an examination. So there I am, I'm laying on my back on the examination table. He's down between my legs and he goes, Jill. <laughs> I go, what? what I do? And he goes, didn't you use the estrogen cream I prescribed for you last year? And I went, no. And he goes, why? And I said, because in my brain, I'm 25 years old and I can't possibly have an age-related issue. And I'm older now and I still feel 25, which is so weird. And anyway, that had him laughing. That was absolutely the truth. And he goes, Jill, I wouldn't have prescribed this for you last year if I didn't see this happening. And so he said, you've got to try the estrogen. So he re-prescribed it. And then he specifically suggested that I rub a pea-sized drop right into the entrance of my urethra. And within two weeks, it was gone. And if I forget to use it, it comes back. So this brings up yet another issue. Some of you have already been prescribed topical estrogen. You used it once and it burned. And you're like going, oh no, no, no. You couldn't pay me to put this on my vulva again, on my urethra again, it hurt like hell. Okay, well the reason why it hurt is because you're dry, you're dry. But if you don't use it, you're just gonna get drier and drier. I've worked with some ladies in their 80s whose little vulvas are like dry potato chips. And I promise you, they're in agony. They're in agony. You have to power through that first 10 days or so. Because every time you give that skin estrogen, it gets better. And so when I first started it, it hurt for, it was hot for about 15 minutes. About 10 days later, it was like a little puff of air, poof of warmth, and then it was gone. And interestingly, if I don't use my estrogen regularly, I start feeling that heat again. And that tells me I haven't been diligent and I need to use it more regularly. So don't let that topical estrogen initial heat or burning scare you. Now, there are some brand names that number one can be very expensive and number two tend to have uh, more preservatives in it. I'm not gonna say those. I will just say that many of us do a preservative-free estrogen cream, estradiol cream that we get from a local compounding pharmacy, super affordable, like mine is $70 for a three month supply uh, with none of the extra preservatives that would be extra irritating. So when you talk to your doctor about your skin, you can always ask for a compounded estradiol cream. But this now brings up the second issue, and the second issue is cancer. You know, because we, there was a lot of hysteria about 10 years ago, 20 years ago, that estrogen caused cancer. And, and in fact, oral estrogen that you swallow and it gets absorbed through your stomach into your bloodstream where it's sent throughout your body, yeah, that certainly has been linked to breast cancer, et cetera. But topical estrogen cream is much safer. It tends to stay in that skin. And I encourage you to Google topical estrogen safety and then talk to your doctor about it. I mean, you gotta do your due diligence here. You gotta learn the issues and, and look at the research yourself. There's a lot of fear about estrogen, but I, I, uh, I will tell you right now that many of the new research studies are spectacular, including one that I read recently that believed that it was safe for even uh, women with a previous history of a gynecological cancer. So let's open that door and let's talk to the doctor about that. Now, of course, there are gonna be some patients, I was working with a patient last week who um, had stage three cancer and it was her outer pelvis. And obviously in that case, using any estrogen was completely mm -hmm. off the table. So what was she going to use? Well, externally, you might notice that when you pee, your urine feels very hot, like it's burning you, 
Well, it's not burning you. It just means your skin is dry on your vulva. And so using something like coconut oil on the outside or V Magic, which is a wonderful over-the-counter product that you can buy that mimics estrogen. It's an olive oil um, and sea buckthorn oil product. Um, uh, if you give that skin that moisture, then urination won't hurt as much and it will help protect that skin. Uh, fair warning about the coconut oil, that oil really soaks through. And so by the end of the day, you might notice oil stains. Uh, so if you're wearing a black dress, you might end up with a circular black stain, uh, you know, where your tush is. And so I would encourage you to use that at night rather than during the day, because yes, that did indeed happen to me. And it was quite embarrassing when it happened. Um, the other thing that we want to think about now is the bladder, you know, because you don't have that mucosal barrier in there anymore. So what can we do to protect the bladder? Well, this is where medications like Elmeron shined because it provided a protective coating. But unfortunately, Elmeron is now associated with a pretty significant eye disease called pigmentary maculopathy and patients are, are uh, reluctant to, to risk that anymore. And so you could then go for uh, a bladder installation, a heparin lidocaine installation. The heparin would coat the bladder, the lidocaine would numb the nerves. We call this a rescue installation. This is really appropriate for somebody in a severe flare. They can do a couple a week for a couple of weeks, try to get you out of that flare. But you can also turn to a chondroitin-based supplement. Now, if you look at the American Urology Association guidelines for IC, they encourage you to try supplements because they don't carry the same risk. They don't carry the same risk that traditional medications do, like eye issues with Elmeron. And so um, the chondroitin-based supplements might provide a little bit of benefit. So the ones that we're talking about are bladder rest, uh, which is a good starter formula, bladder builder, um, uh, Cystomend, or perhaps Cystoprotex. So we've got a couple of options there. So to just kind of summarize here, understand that we no longer think of IC as a bladder disease in many of us, that there's something else going on. And in the case of patients with estrogen atrophy, it's that your skin is getting drier. And so we have to address that. You know, Elevil in an antidepressant is not going to fix that. Uh, you can chase your symptoms with various IC meds, but it's always important to try to focus on the underlying cause. And the underlying cause in this case is the integrity of the bladder wall and the integrity of the skin. It's compromised because you've lost some estrogen. So anyway, I've got a really good blog on our website that we just put up uh, that you can read, learn a little bit more about this as well as some of your treatment options. Um, and also if you come on over to our store, the icnsales.com, uh, you can go through our GSM buyer's guide and see some of our recommendations there. But ultimately in the end, uh, you've got to talk to your doctor. We need eyeballs on your skin and we need your doctor to look at your skin to tell you to what degree of estrogen atrophy you're in. And please remember that the most important therapy is topical estrogen. And so you got to learn more about that. Anyway, I hope that that helps. My job is to educate you and inform you, maybe open up some new doors and then encourage you to get back to your doctor to have a good discussion about the pros and cons of of whatever issue we're talking about. In this case, using topical estrogen and other things. If you have any other questions, please come on over to the IC Network website, icnetwork.org. Uh, I welcome uh, you and, and we would love to help you in any way that we can. We wish you the best.